Hello, Driving Intelligence Community. Well, there's probably several videos on YouTube that talk about changing the transmission fluid on a 2014 Mazda CX-5 with the Sky Active technology, but I'm gonna do a little twist. This vehicle was bought at uh, 47,000 miles on the odometer. It was at a, uh, a rental agency, and it now has over 130,000 miles on it. The trans transmission fluid has never been changed. So I went into the manual, the Mazda CX-5 manual, and for some reason, it's devoid of any information on the transmission. I went into a Google search or an internet search, and it says that the transmission fluid is lifetime. Now, I don't prescribe to this. I'll actually link a, a video where I changed the transmission fluid in a Ford Explorer some time ago, pure black. My opinion, I'm gonna change my transmission fluid every 30,000 miles. I don't believe in this lifetime fluid. But we're gonna check on the quality of this fluid to see how good Mazda's recommendation is because I've already started using Blackstone as a company that's going to, uh, to test the condition of the fluid that comes out of my vehicles from time to time. I've got a video coming up where I've done this with the, uh, the Tension F-150 where I'm using Babylon Restore Protect. I wanna see what the oil quality is after I've been using it for some time. So I'm gonna go through changing that, that oil this video will include the results from Blackstone. I'm gonna use my favorite transmission fluid, which is uh, for this vehicle, the uh, Royal Purple Max ATF. And I'm also using a Wix filter. I'm gonna link all these in the description of this video. Uh, I'm using a Wix. There, there are a lot of cheaper filters out there, but I don't wanna take a chance. I want the vehicle to last, so I wanna put a good quality filter in there. Wix is high quality. So let's just get started, change this transmission fluid and see where we go. To start off, we're gonna remove this valence. So that's just a bunch of push pins and I think it's 10 millimeter screws, maybe eight millimeter. I'll link the tools for that in the description as well. All right, we got the valence off and now what we gotta do is remove this drain plug. It's got an eight millimeter Allen head. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collect it in this container to see exactly how much fluid comes out. That is some black transmission fluid. Exactly four quarts came out. This filled up one gallon. Uh, I bought three quarts, but I'm gonna make it up with some extra capacity I've got up there. Got to clean this drain plug up. It doesn't look like it's magnetic, but it does appear that there is a place for a magnet on the drain pan, right where that dimple is. So I'm gonna put the plug back in, drop the pan, and pull the filter. All right, so there's quite a few 10 millimeter bolts here. I'm gonna take all of that except for one on each end, and then we'll slowly take those out to get the pan off. All right, Mazda used some gasket maker on this material, on this pan, so I've gently used a little spatula to pull this away from the, the transmission and now we've got it off all right here's the filter and it's held on by two 10 millimeter bolts there's one right here and there's another right over here we'll pop those and drop the filter That is some dark fluid. One thing to do, I do this on other vehicles, to make sure that these O-rings come off with it. You don't want to leave them up there when you put the new filter in. I was interesting is when I, for example, my 10th generation F-150 with the 470W transmission. The transmission with this many miles on it, you're going to see a lot of uh, residue. And I don't see any residue on this. So... It's very interesting that uh, I don't see any wear indication other than dark fluid in this transmission. All right, I stand corrected. Although there was no friction material on the transmission components like the shift solenoids or other parts of the transmission, here you can see a lot of friction material or residue that's uh, in the pan. So that's kind of interesting, but it's still not that much. <clears throat> this magnet was barely covered with any friction material or metal. So this is transmissions in extremely good shape, even after 130,000 miles. All right, got all this clean, took the magnet off, thoroughly cleaned the magnet, got all the friction material off, any kind of metal. 
And I also cleaned the gasket surface up here. So I need to put the filter back on. I'm gonna use some Loctite, some blue Loctite, very little just to keep everything tight. And we'll button it back up and put the transmission fluid back in. Okay, I lubricated these O-rings with a little bit of transmission fluid before I'm putting it in place. Now we'll put the two bolts back in. All right, the uh, filter torque spec is what I understand 80 to 88 inch pounds. So I'm going to 85 inch pounds. Make sure that's inch pounds, not foot pounds. All right, so the Wix filter comes with a replacement gasket. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dry mount it. I don't like to use the, uh, the Permatex, but you can see that it's a little unruly. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this uh, assembly glue, but you can also use Vaseline to, uh, to kind of hold it in place while you're installing it so it doesn't flop all over the place and make it difficult. And before you all say grease on a gasket surface, don't forget when you're putting an oil filter on, you're always supposed to put oil on the filter's gasket to make sure that it seats properly. So no difference. All right, pan bolts are per the uh, internet, 71 to 88 inch pounds. So I'm gonna go 85 just as I did with the filter with a cross hatch pattern. Equally distribute the pressure on the gasket all right, the drain plug is torque spec at 23 to 30. Again, you need to confirm all these yourself, but this is what I'm using. I'm actually gonna to go to 30 foot-pounds for this. All right, the dipstick is on the front of the engine. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. I've already loosened up to crack it to release the dipstick. You can see here's the transmission pan we just finished working on. There's the front left wheel. And again, right here is the dipstick. All right, so the inconvenience is trying to get the transmission fluid in there. You can't put a, a normal funnel. So uh, I'm using my gear oil pump with the uh, quart of fluid, and I'm going to put four quarts in the exact amount that came out. So it should be perfect for, uh, for when it's supposed to be topped off. The CX-5 has been driven several hundred miles since the transmission fluid drain and refill with the new filter. And now it's time to put that fascia on. I wanted to check underneath to make sure there are no leaks. Everything looks good. And then what we're gonna do is take a look at the Blackstone report, which is very eye-opening, so stay tuned. And now with great anticipation, here are the results from the Blackstone automatic transmission fluid test. I have to say it's very shocking. Now, just as a reminder, I said at the video that Mazda thinks that this is lifetime transmission fluid, and except in extreme conditions, you don't have to change this transmission fluid. It's really rather shocking, but here are the test results that, uh, that indicate that there is a lot of metal in this transmission fluid. These wear metals are concerning. Iron at 198 parts per million, two and a half times universal average, indicates wear on steel gears and bearings. Copper at 249 parts per million, 4.3 times the universal average, points to worn bushings or thrust washers. Aluminum at 80 parts per million, three times the universal average, likely from the torque converter or casing. Tin at 12 parts per million, four times the universal average, showing moderate bearing wear. And nickel, five parts per million, five times the universal average, but still low, so probably not a big issue. The report says high metals are partly from initial break-in when the transmission was new, but mostly from 130,000 miles of use. Compared to their 43,000 mile average, this CX-5's transmission has taken a beating and is grinding itself to death. Now let's take a look at contaminants. Silicone at 48 parts per million is high, but this car has never been repaired, so it's not from a repair sealant. Mazda uses a form of gasket sealant for the transmission pan, which could be the source. Plus, this car has been in Fort Lauderdale, Florida for its entire life near the beach. My question is, could sand in the air get into the transmission? It's possible and that silicone acts like grit grinding the transmission internals. Sodium and potassium are at 18 ppm and 7 ppm respectively, low but hinting at a minor coolant leak, maybe from the transmission cooler. This isn't urgent but needs to be monitored. Finally, a look at the additive package. 
It's surprisingly solid for 130,000 miles. Phosphorus at 283 parts per million is high, great for anti-wear. Boron at 46 parts per million keeps shifts smooth. Calcium at 125 parts per million cleans the fluid, but zinc at 11 parts per million and barium at 9 parts per million are low, showing fading protection. Here's the deal. I only drained and refilled with a new filter, so these metals and contaminants were diluted by about 50%. The current fluid still has significantly higher metals and contaminants compared to the average used transmission fluid tested by Blackstone. Mazda's lifetime claim doesn't hold up. 130,000 miles of driving clearly stressed this fluid. I plan to do another drain and refill on 25,000 miles to keep the fluid quality strong and ensure this transmission lasts. Don't fall for lifetime fluid promises. Regular maintenance saves your transmission, promising many miles of potentially trouble-free service. If this video helped you rethink your vehicle's care, hit that like button and subscribe and share. Comment if you've tested your fluid or live near a beach with similar issues and I'll see you next time on Driving Intelligence.